All right, so this is Dr. Lee Horine. I'm on day 34 of a solid food vacation. So I wanted to document the changes and things that I've experienced up until till this point. Uh, so for those of you who have not seen any of my other videos, I am following John Rose's protocol of a solid food vacation or a juice feasting. And I plan on going the distance. Um, what that really means is that I'm gonna continue juicing until I no longer have a solid bowel movement consistently for a period of time, meaning I've gotten all the junk out of me. So I really have been surprised by how much junk I have inside of my body. I've considered myself to be very healthy. I've considered myself to be on the path of health. And so I expected to have some, you know, detox symptoms and I, I just didn't really anticipate the level of acidity that I have inside of my body. Uh, the past week I have been probably, I've had three or four days where every single one of the, like three or four days out of the last week, I've had uh, acidic stool. So when I'm having a bowel movement, it literally, it feels like acid is coming out, which is, sort of similar but not exactly the same as when you eat like hot spicy peppers and they you know like the, the day after it, when it starts to come out everything burns similar to that but uh more of like a lingering acid burn afterwards like literally the tissue has been damaged and so that has been like a huge eye awake like eye opening experiencing for me waking me up to how toxic my body has been um, and I think that's also leading to a lot of bowel movements that I've been experiencing because I've been experiencing anywhere from three to like 10 bowel movements even in the last week. Um, some of some days they're all solid. Some days they're mostly liquid stools uh, with solids coming out inside of it uh, together. But it's, oh my gosh, it's really uh, pretty, pretty incredible. And it's amazing the connection that I've been starting to develop between how I'm feeling emotionally and then connecting that to what's happening in my body. So like when I'm having, let's say I have one of those times where I'm gonna pass that like acid-like stool, I know it's coming an hour before. And I've heard people like Nathan Van Dutch speaking about this, where he's, you know, you can like feel it coming before, and you, you know it's coming. And I was like, how would you, like, how would you know? Like, how would you be able to distinguish? Well, when you walk the walk, <laughs> what is it? You put up, put on the cape, and you, you 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 journey on. You experience it. So I've been experiencing like being very tuned in to like what's now happening in my body, what's being released, and what's about to come out. Knowing that whatever is about to come out, like something you know bad is is happening. So I've been really intrigued and interested in kind of the detox process. Uh, so much that I've enrolled in Dr. Morse's uh, School of Detoxification. And because this is just really makes a lot of sense. Um, it's a piece of the puzzle that I've believed that detox is important, but I didn't realize the kind of the mechanics of going about it to, to this degree and how crucial it is in the process of healing. And you know, I'm looking at I've had periods of, I guess, detox symptoms because I was doing, I felt like I was pretty good. I was pretty, pretty healthy. And I've been having like this, my mid back would start to cramp up on me. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And that tends to be my weak spot. Like whenever uh, I have issues, you know, I overrun myself, I don't sleep enough. Like it tends to, to show up in my back, my mid back, like between my shoulder blades and maybe a little bit, a little bit lower. And what I'm finding is that it's all the lymph nodes that are around my mid back, around my lungs. Because when I was younger, I had a lot of bronchitis, uh, a lot of chest chest issues. I had my tonsils out when I was probably seven years old, uh, a lot of sinus issues. So, I mean, talk about lymphatic problems, uh, looking back my whole life, I'm like, wow, this, no wonder, and I'm 34 right now, that it's, I'm, I'm experiencing so much of these uh, detox symptoms because I'm, I've just been acidic 
and this lymphatic waste has been uh, building up and building up and accumulating further and further. And I'm, I feel so grateful to have decided to do this now as opposed to waiting for uh, more symptoms to show up down the road. And there's been little things that, uh, you know, that I've known that aren't right, but I just didn't know how to fix them. Like one of them has been hair loss. Like my hair has definitely been, been thinning. Now my dad is bald. My grandpa uh, was bald. And so I just, you know, there's a part of you that says that, oh, this is, this is heredity. But deep down, I guess maybe it's my, just my core belief that everything in the body breaks down for a reason. And if you're losing your hair, it's, it's happening for a reason. You can see that when people get super stressed. I see that in clinic all the time. I practice like people that are having thyroid issues that are starting to lose their hair. Like there, there's always a contributing factor to versus just, uh, oh yeah, you're a man and there's a male pattern baldness. Like, oh my gosh, well, I had headaches every day for years. The chiropractic helped me to overcome that. And also cutting out gluten and dairy helped me to overcome that. So like the combination of that got rid of my headaches, but I'm thinking the amount of lymphatic uh, like swelling that I had in my, in my head makes a lot of sense. My eyes, uh, the whites of my eyes had become more and more noticeably bloodshot over the years. And that's another thing. It's like sign that the eyeballs are swelling. And so, yeah, like I said, I'm so excited every single time that I go and have a, a bowel movement. Now it's just one more like step towards cleansing my body and regaining optimal health because like I said, I felt good before this, um, knowing that there was more that I could, that I could achieve, knowing that my energy levels were still weren't where, uh, you know, I expect them to be, uh, knowing that I like having some mucus and phlegm when I wake up in the morning and having to cough, like that there's something not right about that, that that's a sign that if I ignore it, it'll continue to get worse. Um, you know, those were the big things and now being able to, to pull that back uh, and take control of it and recognize that, yeah, those are problems. Yeah, the, you know, losing hair is is a problem. That is not something that we're supposed to, to go through even as men who have that in our family. Um, it's, it's exciting and empowering to me, uh, you know, more than just the aesthetics. I mean, that, that's definitely a contributing factor because I, I don't want to be, you know, lose my hair. If I can keep my hair, that's awesome. But I was also of the, like just sticking to that topic of hair, I was also very anti doing things like Rogaine or uh, whatever they can do, like the different surgeries where the, I was even talking to my dad and he's like, well, they can do uh, uh, like stem cells or platelet rich plasma and they can like shoot it in, in the scalp. But I'm thinking, so if it's possible to do these things and regenerate it, then why did my body not do that in the first place? And if I'm looking at something like a Rogaine, that is actually a medication with an active ingredient that becomes systemic in the body on some level, and that's a toxin. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a toxin. I remember in chiropractic college, um, yeah, I didn't have as much understanding of the body as I do a decade later. But even then, I was. I remember. So I had some friends who were like, "Oh yeah, I started taking the row game because my hair was just thinning," and I was talking to a guy who had a little bit uh, less hair than than I did, and he's like, "Oh yeah," and he was probably six years older than me. And he's like, oh yeah, I, I'm taking Rogaine and that's the, you know, that's, that's going to save my hair. And it just didn't ever fit right. So I think there becomes this, uh, you know, this, this voice inside, uh, it was a voice inside of my head that was just steering me and be like, Hey, that's, that's, that's not the right move. That's not right. And like medication is, is never the answer. Um, same with facial creams and products you know, putting stuff on to try to cover up the, the symptoms. And it, it's always an inside out thing. You got to cleanse from the inside out. So speaking of that, you know, I've been having a lot of the, the detoxing as far as bowel movements goes, a lot of uh, watery, nasty smelling uh, stools. And, uh, but I've also been having a lot of body odor. So I've stopped putting on deodorant, which is a little bit stressful because I'm in, in the office. I'm like, okay, I got to make sure at lunchtime that I'm soaping down my armpits and cleaning up so that I can, don't come back to the office. You know, it's like a stinking mess. Uh, but I don't want to have anything that's going to, to, to interfere with my body being able to get the, the, the toxins out because the skin is a major eliminative organ. It's a, 
it acts as the, your third kidney. It's, it's there to release more toxins. So uh, I've definitely noticed that I've, I've just consistently had body odor that's been coming out of me. And I know a lot of people that have been raw food or raw vegan have uh, noted or that they, they recommend or they mention that body odor is something that goes away. And so I literally assumed that after two weeks, I'm like, oh, after two weeks of doing this, because I'm doing nothing but juices right now, no meats. Uh, and I had cut out eating meat about a month before I started this. Uh, and I assumed that, oh yeah, I'll be totally, you know, stink free or whatnot. So, you know, not wearing deodorant's not gonna be a big, dish, big issue. Like I said, I underestimated how much toxicity that I actually was carrying in my body, which is, alarming to me being a chiropractor being in, uh, a huge influencer on people's health and being a light worker to, to to show the way that how many of my patients are overloaded with serious toxins um, and their lymph system is backing up and I'm just starting to to see it my uh, awareness has been really really cranking up um, another thing I can reflect back on is my energy levels in terms of like, you know, getting through the day and doing my thing, like have been solid. Like there, I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted. In fact, I'm doing exercise in the morning, just a little, not a lot like push ups and then pull ups. And we got a little rebounder trampoline. That's something that I added in, uh, recently I actually got it for my wife's birthday because she loves trampolines and she's been, uh, as a kid and she'd been talking about it for a long time. And so I went ahead and pulled the trigger, but we've both been getting to enjoy that now and just doing some, uh, doing some bouncing to get that lymph, uh, flowing has been awesome because she's also doing the, the detox. She's 10 days behind me. So she'd be on day 24 today and she's pregnant and she's got more energy than she's not slowing down. She's not having morning sickness. She's not having any of these issues. Uh, I don't think that she has much toxicity to, to as I have in my tissues, uh, based on how she's progressing through. Uh, so there's definitely a difference in, you know, in people as you go through, which is pretty interesting to, to look at from one person to another. Everybody's on their own hero's journey, right? You're the only one who can save yourself. Um, you're the only one who has the answers to, to figure it out. So that's where we're putting the balls in our own courts so that we carry it forward and do the best that we can. And it has been really, really, really eye opening. Uh, the energy levels are definitely going up. So I, I, I know that I tend to talk a lot about the detox stuff because it's so exciting to see the stuff that's coming out and see the kind of the, the things that I'm, I'm noticing. Uh, now speaking of that, uh, once again, another detox symptom, my eyes the other day, we just got like, like allergy wise, like one eye just got like, I just wanted to itch it. Um, I've had, uh, my eyes have been feeling kind of dry, even though I'm drinking about seven quarts of, uh, juices a day. Like I'm really, really staying hydrated, uh, on the juices. Mostly uh, watermelon cantaloupe juices right now. I'm really liking the melons. They're, they're tasting awesome. And, uh, but I was like realizing that, oh my gosh, like my eyes are eliminating right now. So I'm eliminating uh, toxins through my eyes and my other mucosa, right? This is another area that it, that it can, stuff comes out. Um, just amazing. Another, another thing is, uh, whenever I'm having a bowel movement, usually once a day, um, what like, uh, usually in the mornings when I have a bowel movement, my nose starts running. And that one tripped me out. I was like, okay, this is not just a one-time thing. This continues to happen here. It, and I was, it became a trend. And so as I'm documenting this stuff, and that's why I recommend that if you're doing this document, your, you know, what you're doing, like kind of like a daily recap, um, and, and just write, write down this stuff so you can start noticing the trend. As I started looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am definitely starting out not having any nasal symptoms. And then I go have a start to have a bowel movement and then instantly I'm having to blow my nose and my nose starts running. And, uh, going through the school of detoxification, I have learned now what that is. It's crazy. And once again, here's the synchronicities because I'm like, what is the connection here? 
and usually I'll stress myself out trying to think about it, uh, research it, and I, I just said, you know what, no, I'm not gonna do that, the answer will come. And within a day, I found out like what it actually was, and it was, and so there's the synchronicity, right? We're getting tuned in to that higher uh, consciousness uh, because of, our, of the connection of not being detoxified. So instead of stressing myself out, and even in excitement of trying to figure it out, uh, that still would be a stressor and now it's not there. And what it turned out to be is the transverse colon is, is embryologically connected to the mucosa and the sinuses especially. So based on how we develop, there's a connection, there's, a, there's an inherent connection between the sinuses and the transverse colon, the col part of the top of the colon that goes this way. And so when that's all congested and stopped up, then you're gonna be stopped up in your nasal cavity. And sure enough, it's like the bowel movement makes it through, boom, like I started to drain. So it's really been just an amazing experience so far and all the things that I'm seeing and uh, I'm feeling better. I'm definitely feeling better. I'm feeling more like emotionally stable. Um, I'm feeling like I'm getting downloads and information very clearly. I'm having synchronicity. Like the other day I'm driving and out of nowhere, I said, you know what, I need to call my mom. And I usually talk to her on, on Saturday. I call my mom and my dad on Saturday or Sunday. And this happened to be a uh, Thursday afternoon. I was like, you know, I'm gonna call her. I pick up the phone and she goes, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about you. I was thinking that I needed to call you about whatever. And I was like, seriously, are you, are you like, and she's like, yeah, cause she, that's not something she you know, usually says when I call her out of the blue. And it's like, wow, that's that, you know, that, that connection, that divine connection, that divine spark that uh, is just making life so much more fun and more exciting and, uh, and, and joyous. And I'm not getting hungry. Like that's the wildest thing. Now I've had a few, uh, a few experiences where I've been craving like Mexican food or guacamole and chips and salsa, despite, you know, literally like in the middle of like sucking out my juice. And so I'm not actually hungry. It's the, uh, the idea. And I don't know if it's like the toxicity uh, of what it is or if it's by, like whenever we're driving past, we always, <laughs> we drove past a uh, barbecue restaurant yesterday. And I about wanted to, I don't know. I was gonna say like, just <laughs> burn the place down no i wanted to eat everything in the place so that's gonna be the more accurate description i'm like oh my god that smells freaking amazing and of course then there's like the emotions that come like wait you're never gonna have barbecue again and all all that i'm like oh i just like like that's yeah just accept it accept that my body has those things and i'm, I'm not a perfect person to you know to have to you know, to, to be steadfast and like, oh, I'm not gonna have any cravings. I'm not gonna be experienced emotionally, like anything whatsoever. Like, nope, nope, I'm, I definitely am. I'm gonna have some cravings here and there, but those are such a small part of the day. And so I, my wife and I were talking about it and we realized, cause she's, you know, she's experienced that off and on. And it's so much easier if you can stay away from uh, those environments like stay away from restaurants you don't have to you know we don't fortunately we're in a position where it's like oh we'll we'll catch up with our friends outside of eating arrangements like or go into a restaurant or something like that we'll meet with them and go you know hang out at the house or go to a park or whatever it happens to be um, because otherwise if you're in that environment you're just really really putting a lot of pressure on yourself unnecessarily you know to to, to smell the smells of the things that we're accustomed to eating. Uh, but as far as nutrition goes, I mean, I'm feeling, feeling great, feeling stronger, um, feeling like I have more endurance, feeling like I have more energy. And that's despite the, the major detox symptoms that I've been, that I've been having. Um, because I mean, those, those are also days that I feel just wiped out. So I'm listening to my body and that's why I'm sharing at day 34 that I'm really surprised this far along. You know, I thought I would just be like through all this stuff and, I'm, I'm good and, and now it's just a matter of kind of getting the, the, the remainder of the junk out for the next couple of months until I'm until I'm done but not realizing that oh man there's a roller coaster to this there's definitely an up and down uh, experience of you know feeling it in your body and like feeling lymph nodes 
another thing I've, I've, uh, and I've noticed is like the inside of my arms here are, they would get like, I can't really show it with the pocket, but like in where my biceps are is a bunch of lymph nodes, right? If you look at the, and like the anatomy charts and I would like be able to physically see them swell up at different periods uh, in my life. Like um, kind of quite often, like I would, I would be like maybe doing like a massage around this area and I'm like, whoa, what are all those little bumps? And like the bumps would deform and they would stay deformed and then I would like move them and they would move. And I was like, is that's not fatty tissue. Like, what is that? That's, and that was the lymph nodes that are, that are moving around and they were so swollen that they were stuck under the skin and I could kind of reposition them somewhat and they would, they would have some wiggle. And I'm like, wow. So I was, I've been backed up like this for years. Cause I remember that in chiropractic college um, and, and thinking that, the, that were, those were like weird fatty deposits or something that you know, had something to do with uh, body fat and like how your body was storing the fat. And it's not, this is, this is lymphatic tissue. This is backed up lymph nodes. Um, and so like, you know, just seeing this and, and I'm, I'm like learning more and it's just helping me as a healer to be able to, to, you know, when I can do something to myself and see everything firsthand, which I believe in a hundred percent, like anything that I'm going to stand behind, it's going to be because, uh, I've experienced the value of it and I've experimented on myself first. And so like, I'm trying to put this many of these pieces together even if they were small subtle things because the small subtle things for other people turn into big things um and yeah, i definitely i've been jotting down so many things so i'm going to make more videos talking about um kind of the things that we might take for granted and recognizing that they're that they're not normal you know what what is normal what's not normal and uh, especially the things that i've that i've noticed in my body and so my hopes is in, in sharing that on like me kind of like nitpicking the things that I've paid attention to in my body that it might bring uh, awareness to you being able to kind of nitpick the things in your body because it's it's important to do so because if we ignore those things like I, you know, I see this in my practice and I tell this to my to my patients is that when you lack the body awareness then things can show up you know you allow things to occur in your life that if you were aware of them then you would you know now you're making a conscious decision to ignore it or or to uh to do something about it but if you don't even know that it's there because you just don't have the awareness then now you're not even making a conscious decision this is just happening to you uh and so you got to gain that control back again so that'll be a really good uh, thing I think to you know to talk about it also helped to bring the clarity back in my own my own body you know, and, and share kind of how to be that investigator you know how do you become an investigator in your own in your own body because uh, uh, I'll just give you another example so speaking of the lymph node thing I have this thing in my forearm which you're not gonna be able to, to see it but it's like all right, I, let me see if I can point it with the camera it's right there here uh, yeah this is not going to show up but it's this you know how when animals and dogs they, they'll they'll put chips inside of them and like i felt like i had been chipped at this i noticed this a couple years ago i'm like what is that and i was like is that that's like a, a lymph node or a piece of like i don't know but it's like okay, but i feel it it's hard it's rock it's calcified and I had actually, I mean, it didn't make me comfortable with it, but I had ignored it. Cause I'm like, well, well, what am I going to do about it? But I had kept it in the back of my mind and I feel it occasionally when I'm uh, like washing myself or scrubbing down and it brings back to my awareness. And now it's like, oh wow, now I have the solution. Now I understand what's causing it. Now I understand how it's the, uh, the, the, the process of, uh, of inflammation due to backing up of the, the congestion of the tissues through poor lymphatic drainage. And that's just like, it made sense then when I correlated it with the rest of my arm that I feel like I see the lymph nodes getting swollen. And so like little things like that, if we can bring our attention to it, we can we can start to connect the dots and we can free ourselves from thinking that, oh, this is just how life is supposed to be. This is just who I am. Uh, and you start to gain the, you know, get the power back. Uh, plus it starts to open you up outside of the box and you start recognizing the things that other people are doing in this world are, they're wrong. 
it's just it, it's wrong just because so many people are doing it doesn't mean that it's right and we have to be the beacons of light with our within ourselves so that we can raise our energetic consciousness on the physical level uh, so that it starts to reconnect and starts to raise the vibration of countless others who are also at our same frequency right so when we're the the way showers or the light beings like we have to be brighter and brighter and that doesn't mean we have to be the biggest mouthpiece out there um, we can start to work on ourselves and then elevate that and then it starts to pour through in our uh, social circles and the people that we influence but it goes beyond that it's quantum it starts to connect to uh, it starts to connect to back to source and the more we can connect back to source then we become we put our awareness on that connection because it's opening that channel back up now we start to raise the vibration across the board um, so those are the thoughts that I wanted to, to share with you on my day 34 update on a uh, juiced feast solid food vacation um, I have no intentions of slowing down uh, this is just getting more exciting by the day and it's uh, it's definitely something that if you're on the fence and you're considering it, uh, like John Rose is the man. He is not lying when he said you're in for a treat. So I will end on that. You guys get after it. Turn the crank and do it.